I'm uh, here in Christchurch, New Zealand. I'm going to do a quick feasibility, and uh, I've just pulled in the parcel layer from the Canterbury Maps viewer. I chucked it in giraffe, and I'm looking around the city of Christchurch and seeing what we can develop. So. Here looks like a, a likely spot, three empty cadastral parcels. We've got some townhouses over there. We've got some double parcels. We've got some sort of, yeah, look, it looks a bit like an apartment building or some commercial over there. So let's, let's do this one. So I'm gonna draw the boundary. And instead of drawing the boundary, I am gonna use the right click function to merge these parcels. So I'm getting the accurate GIS data. Merge and you. Okay, and now I'm gonna save this project, 241 Hereford, Her Hereford Street, and I'm gonna go there. I could pull the zoning in, etc., but for speed, I shall not. All right, now my plan is basically to draw one of those buildings over here, one over here, basically an upside down U shape, um, and then put a bit of surface parking at the front and some landscape and then cost it up. So let's go. Now I'm kind of matching the size and scale of those buildings. I'm gonna use this garden apartments typology and I'm matching their setbacks as well, which is why I always say the satellite image is the developer's best friend. Because if he can do it, why can't you? All right, three stories, we're gonna go two, and then I'm gonna draw a rectangle over here that I'm gonna say is a landscape, simple. And that's good. And then I'm gonna draw a plaza at front. 197 square meters. I could chuck some parking bays on this guy uh, just to see what I can guess. Choose reference edge. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe we need to be a bit wider. Okay, that's good. Well, can we at least go back to back? I'll spin this guy around so I get what I want. Um, but that's quite a lot of parking. I'll move this guy over a bit. This is the kind of classic like test fit problem. Um, you say, oh, can we, can we, no, it's too short. Okay, so we've got what we wanted. Um, now we're just gonna play around with the figures. So we've got 19,055. 1955 square meters GFA of garden apartment. Um, so if we go to the garden apartment usage, uh, we can see the assumptions. So our, our, our assumption is 90% efficient, and then it's 80% cell efficient, as in 90% uh, including corridors and 80% excluding. I'm actually just gonna set it to 100, 100, because in this instance, we're gonna use this typology to represent um, sort of row houses. Of course, I could make a new one, which would probably be smart, but. We're, we're committed now. Then I'm gonna change the residential mix to 100% three beds. And I'm gonna set the size of those three beds to um, 130 square meters. And the price, I'm gonna to set to $950,000. 950, one, two, three. I don't know if that's anywhere close, but you would. So you'd put that in, 950 square meters. And now you can see we get 17 uh, three beds in this, in this development. If we go an extra level, we're up to 20. All right. And now we can actually start running the, the FISA. And so I'm just gonna open our default one and go through it. And the sales feasibility can go to the bottom, cost first, income second. Okay, let's go through it. So our hard cost is showing $4.4 million. And it's saying that we're building the garden apartments for 2,000 a square meter. So let's say that's wrong. Let's say it's more. Um, let's say it's 3,000 a square meter. So I'm just gonna shortcut into the, into the usages and change that. So our hard cost now jumped to 6 million. And if we come across, we can see our landscape is picked up in this calculation as well. And it's at 300 and our plaza is at 100. So we'll change the plaza as well. Let's change him to 240. Okay. Um, now you can see what's happening in this calculation. I'm just getting the gross area of the geometries and then their hard cost parameter. So I'm just going to this geometry, picking its area, which is, um, where's its area hiding? Well, this one's got 387. Oh, this one's got 620. 
and this one's got 465, and then you just multiply that by 3,000 in this instance, 300 in this instance, and uh, whatever, 240 in that instance. Our soft cost is, is set currently as a, as a per square meter rate, which is how it's kind of done in America. What I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set it as a percentage of hard cost, and I'm gonna say it's 0.1, uh, 0.1 is at 10%, and our contingency is 10% uh, of hard and soft cost. And right, let's say our soft cost actually has to inc include fees and taxes, so let's jump it up to 15%. All right. Now, sales income is currently set to, is, is currently showing $6 million, and the way we're doing there is we're working out the sale price per square meter, which we may not, we may want to do, but we may not want to do. And this is why Giraffe is so exceptionally powerful. It's like, it doesn't matter how you think. Like, currently, it's saying you sell garden apartment for 3,000 a square meter. Um, which is why your sales values are just a little bit lower than your hard cost because you're, sell you're only selling the, you're not selling the landscape or the plaza, but you're having to build them. So let's get our sale price accurate. So I'm gonna to go to that dwelling um, three bed price per, showing me that 950, 950 as we said it. I'm gonna add another one. It's gonna be that dwelling three bed count. And I'm just going to go times A times B. So you can see it's only got two um, geometries, two terms in this equation, because it's only picking up the garden apartments, and there's only two garden apartment geometries. So if I were to break this one up like this, and say, okay, I'm going to have to do a separate building over there, and it's going to be garden apartments, two levels. Then if we come to the sales values, now there's one of three, because we've got that additional garden apartment. Right, so sales values uh, 50 million and non-residential sales are none. So, you know, if this guy was retail or something like that, potentially there'd be some non-residential sales. Or management fees, like, I don't know, the other stuff that you can sort of go. So our total sales is $15 million. Now, our target return is 20, 20%, and our, resi our residual land cost now becomes $4.5 million. And we're just working that out by saying, hey, our total sales is 15 million, our total cost is, is 8 million, we want to make 20% return, so how much can we spend on the land such that 8 million of cost plus the land plus 20% of both of those things combined equals 15 million? And, and that number turns out to be 4,558. So you should offer that right now, 4.5 million on this land. You can, you can return, you can make a 2.5 million return, which is return on cost of, you know, on your cost of 8 million bucks, 20%. So I think that is, is, you know, I think this is really quick. You know, we're eight minutes in and I've done a scheme and I've done the um, returns and the, the FISO. And um, I think that's pretty powerful. And now this return calculation, which I'm saying, um, yeah, so, so 8.1 plus 2.5, you know, 2.5 divided by 8.1 plus 2.5 should be 20%. Um, but again, if you want to think about return differently and you're unhappy with my calculations, which you would be wise to be, all this is, is just maths. This is just some really basic formulas. So, you know, solve for X, get your Excel, you know, copy paste it into here and you get this feasibility. And so now I'm going to show you in the last 30 seconds how crazy powerful this is because now I can just go option two. And I'll copy all of this stuff and, and hide the default option and paste it on an option two and do something like this. So now we maybe go to the, the council and say, hey, can we do like, you know, this thing where we're not overshadowing anyone because we've pushed all the built form to the, the end. And we'll, what we'll do as well is we'll make a much, we'll put a sub, you know, we'll put a lot more um, park and it, it's walkable. So we'll eliminate some of those car parks like dense urban core, I'm doing some more landscape. And what I can do now is I can, you know, configure my output. And if I just wait a red hot second, we'll see that I've got these two different um, options and the feasibility is run on both of them. So that, you know, now I'm making 3.8 million for this, this option. And um, even if the council asked me to come down a little bit, uh, it's, it's more profitable to do this, even including the additional the additional costs um, than it is to do the first. And so that's how, you know, that's how you just, 
you just run options, you test designs, you engage the councils at the same time as doing the numbers. Um, it's really, really cool.